Hello, my name is Ryan Page, and I'm an application specialist for Tecla Structures. Today in this video, we are going to provide an introduction to the two general types of rebar tools found in Tecla Structures, rebar groups and rebar sets. Specifically, the goal is to define each of the two types of tools and provide some introductory guidance on their strengths and common applications. But again, this is just an introduction and is not meant to be a complete guide. So with that, let's jump right in. So the first thing that we need to understand is that rebar groups and rebar sets are not mutually exclusive. You can use them in combination in your models. And they both have value in their input methods for different reasons when we're detailing our rebar. So for rebar groups, they provide uh, a predictability for us in regards to how we control clear cover or clearances in non-mass concrete applications. A great example of this is masonry walls, or if you have to kind of build a separate element or cage within an overall shape of concrete, they more or less act dependently from our concrete, right? And they rely on us and in inputting the correct uh, values in the properties pane to control clear cover, shortening, extensions, hooks, that sort of thing. Um, it's a very direct, almost stick build kind of mentality. Now with rebar sets, it's a little different. They utilize the concrete geometry and they can do it for both parts and for pores. So you can actually reinforce pores uh, in poor mode with, where you cannot do that with rebar groups. Um, and it, it, it adheres to standard clear values either in the options or additional clear cover that we provide on the concrete itself or even through surfaces. Um, then we detail that further. It's just straight stick bar and then we add splice lines uh, where our splices is. We add end hook details um, and couplers and cranks and so on. Now as I said rebar sets are dependent on that concrete. We can use that to our advantage where um, where it's applicable. I think what ends up happening with a lot of people is they try to fight that relationship and I think when you run into that that's where you want to go look at the groups. So I think sets are great for simple, straightforward, and upfront applications of reinforcement. But if you've got unique challenges or you just seem to be fighting that, that geometry, just go back to groups or a single bar or, or whatever it may be. Now, I think a natural question that extends from talking about groups versus sets is where should I use them? And I have a few suggested applications, but by all means, this is not a complete list. Um, the first for like rebar groups would be circular group. It is really a great tool, so if you need to achieve this, this is where you want to do it. Again, this is outside using other components to help you achieve your rebar configuration. Uh, I think a really great place for groups is secondary reinforcement or additional bar, especially if it needs to be somewhat independent of the overall geometry of the concrete, or you're doing something like masonry. Um, you are able to add groups or single bars to provide that additional reinforcement. Just make sure to name it such so that you can filter it out pretty easy. Um, one place that I've used groups heavily is in complex and congested areas. For example, inside of, say, large base mats where you have nested cages or cages inside of cages underneath, underneath where equipment goes. Um, rebar groups can really help you get that configuration of bar in, especially if it's not necessarily contouring or dictated by the surface geometry or the skin of the concrete. So it's a great use there. Uh, and then naturally, if you're using any components in your detailing, which you should be if you can, if you can manage it, um, such as like the rectangular area reinforcement to put a kind of a cage inside of a wall, or even the continuous footing, um, strip footing reinforcement, I actually like that tool quite a bit, helps really with your corner bar. But these areas, this is a I mean, most applications use groups, and so, you know, uh, utilize them where you can. Just remember, it's an 80-20 rule. Sometimes you're going to have to take that component a little further than the dialog box will let you. Uh, so get familiar with rebar groups inside the properties pane to, to do that. Now, for rebar sets, um, I think that tapered bar, it really excels for that. You don't have to explode the group. And it's ready to go, and it's easily more updatable if you get changes sent to you. Um, in, in that same vein, conversely with rebar groups, I think doing your skin bar or your, your edge reinforcement or any sort of just contouring to the surface geometry of your concrete, whether it's parts or pores, I think that's where rebar sets really excel. And that kind of flows into generic or basic concrete reinforcement 
I think the sets really kind of expedite some of that placement. Just get familiar with the different modifiers that you can put in, the the end details and the uh, splitters. I think if you can you can learn those tools a little bit better, I think you, you'll really carry yourself forward. And don't be afraid to turn on and off rebar faces uh, in the visibility to help you kind of get your converse, uh, your get your reinforcement where you need to be, and uh, and then turn that off so that it doesn't get in your way. Uh, lastly, uh, these are great too. Here is multi-layer reinforcement. Uh, so if you have two layers of horizontal and vertical bars in a large wall or other mass placement, um, rebar sets are going to put this in a nice neat order for you and you can manipulate it through the contextual toolbar about where they reside. So another great application for sets. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. Want to learn more about this topic or how to get started with Tecla structures? Just check out the video's description for links to our user assistance page, getting started guide, and our online campus.